It's Mrs. Lee here. It's assembly number one and it's week beginning. <gasps> wow, the 6th of December. Woo! It's very chilly in school today. I've put my special Santa hat on. I'm trying to keep myself warm. Shall we start with a routine? Okay, what's the time, Mr. Wall? <gasps> well, I can see that the long hand, that's the minute hand, is on the three. And I know that that means it is, you're right, quarter past. And I can see that the shorthand, that's the hour hand, is just slightly off the number 11. I put it all together and I get, that's right, a quarter past 11. What else is on our routine? Well, the lovely Mrs. Turner has changed our language of the month. And if you've been outside and had a look, how to speak German. And we have a few children in our school who hear and speak this language at home. So, guten Tag. And then also we have our Makaton sign of the week. That's changed as well. Oh, now, I've chosen this one. Can you look at it really carefully? It tells you what it is. Sorry. It's a small circular movement over your heart. So you put your hand like this and where your heart is, you move your hand around and that means sorry. Sorry. Can you do it? Sorry. Oh, it's a really good word because sometimes it makes things, that's right, a lot better. I know that some of you are finding it a bit tricky at the moment to really be as kind as you can. Remember the seven golden rules? Did you see them? There's seven of them, isn't there? Can you tell me, what is the first one? That's right, to be gentle. And sometimes we forget that when we're really busy and we're really excited. Oh, we're feeling a bit tired. And I really need everybody to be gentle. But if you accidentally hurt somebody, then I need you to say, that's right, sorry. Oh, Mrs. Lee has got so many things to show you. So I'm going to go through them now. So are you ready? Three, two, one. You can bring cards in to post to your friends in your class. You can go to the grotto if you brought your three pounds in for the Christmas bait. How exciting. There's still time to go and shop in Elfridges for a loved one at home. And here, oh, look at all these lovely books. If you come here, you must look after all the toys. Thank you. Our school looks amazing, doesn't it? Mrs. Orlidge has been so, so busy with my mummy, Mrs. Sellers, and they have decorated our school. Did you see Santa's Little Elf's Grotto? Oh, how exciting! <music> Mrs. Orlidge and Mrs. Sellers have been working really, really hard also to get everything ready for the fete. So there's lots of activities, and they're all Christmassy for you to join in with. Did you see at the front of the school in Mrs. Lee's office, did you see the lovely display of books? Mm. Now, if you want to go into the research centre, then there are five sticks. Two, three, four, five. But you've got to sit down and read. You know that if there's people all moving around, then Mrs. Lee will shut it, won't she? So if you want to read a book, it's absolutely fine. You can come and get a book from outside my office, one of the Christmas books. Sit yourself down in the research centre. So, what else is happening? <gasps> yes! In a few sleeps' time, we are going to go to the pantomime. Oh, yes, we are. That's everybody in the school. We are going to get on a coach and we're going to travel all the way to a city. Mm, a city called Ely. All right, it'll take us about 40 minutes to get there. Mrs. Lee went yesterday. And when we get there, we'll be able to go into the theatre. Let me show you a picture of the theatre. This, children, is the outside of the theatre. The coach will pull up outside the front 
we'll be able to go through these black doors into the building. When we get into the building, we'll be able to go and sit in the auditorium on the seats. If you need to go to the toilet, there's quite a few of them just round the corner from the auditorium. We're going to sit there and we're going to watch the performance. And there will be an interval, that's a little break, where we'll be able to have our snack. Now we're going to take raisins and we're going to take some water um, in between two parts of the performance. There's going to be music and dancing and singing. All right, there's going to be goodies and there's going to be birdies. And you're going to be able to shout and you're going to be able to go boo and behind you and join in with the dancing and the singing. It's going to be a lot and lot of fun. I can't wait. All right, and then we're going to get back on the coach and the coach is going to bring us all the way back home, back to school. And in here, we're going to have our lunch in the hall and we've got festive pack-up lunches and our lovely cook has made us some really nice festive biscuits so we'll be able to have a sandwich so don't forget get on school grid and sign up for something to eat or bring your own packed lunch exciting times uh, this story i know you probably have a copy of this at home you would have read this story it's called the three bears and goldilocks and you probably know it that little girl goes in the woods, she goes into a house that she shouldn't go into. And when she's in there, she eats the porridge, she sits on the chairs and she lays in the bed. And each time she does one of those things, she either finishes all the porridge, so there's none left, breaks a chair or falls asleep in, in the bed. And when the three bears come back, they aren't very happy with her, are they? Well, that book has been rewritten into the Ghanaian Goldilocks. And I thought it would be really nice to read this version because when we go to see Sleeping Beauty at the pantomime, it will be a version. It won't be like the Disney one that you've seen on television and it might not be like the one you've read in your books. It will be a version, all right? And this is a version of Goldilocks. Now, this one is set in Ghana, okay? Now, Ghana is a country in Africa. Now, it's about a little boy called Kofi. He's called Goldilocks because of his hair has gone very, very blonde at the edges, where he's always out at the seaside. Here is Kofi. He's about your age. Kofi loves playing outside. There he is. Kofi loves being with his family. is called Goldilocks though, because of his lovely sunny hair. Kofi sometimes can be a little bit cheeky though. Like for instance, one day he had to go to the market to get some coconuts. But when he got there, instead of taking three coconuts and buying three coconuts, he bought three coconuts and took one extra. But he was spotted because of his lovely Goldilocks hair. <gasps> His mummy was not pleased. Kofi had to say sorry and go back to the market and give back the coconut that he had taken. One day, he was cooking with his mummy and they had run out of tomatoes, but the market wasn't open. So, Kofi had an idea and he thought he'd go next door and see if he could borrow some tomatoes. When he knocked at the door though, children, there was no one there, but the door... Kofi thought, I'll just go in and see if they've got some tomatoes in the kitchen. Wow, when he got inside the kitchen, he could smell the most delicious stew he'd ever smell. It was a stew which was called fufu. And it was in three bowls. There was a large bowl, a medium-sized bowl, and a tiny bowl. Now the fufu in the first bowl was oh, too hot. And the fufu in the medium bowl was too cold. Blech. But the fufu in the smallest bowl was just the best. It made Goldilocks, Kofi, smile. And before you knew it, he'd eaten all of it. Well, after that, his belly was feeling a little bit full. And he thought, we really should just go back. But the house looked a little bit different. So we're just going to have a little bit of exploring time. So he went into the living room and he saw some amazing pictures and he saw three really cool stalls. Now, because his belly was feeling quite full, 
Kofi decided that he'd sit on them. Now, when he got onto the biggest stool, he found it was far too hard. And then he went on to the middle-sized stool and he found it far too soft with all those cushions on it. But just then, he saw a smaller stool, which he thought was just the best. And he jumped on it quickly. It had broken. <gasps> the stool had split in half. It lay on the floor in bits. <gasps> Said Kofi. Uh-oh. Says then he could hear something. So he thought, oh, better go and hide quickly. And he ran as quickly as he could into another room. When he got into the room, he saw that there was his lovely cupboards. And when he opened up the cupboards, he saw the most beautiful different cloths. And he knew that they were called Kenti cloths. And they were beautiful with lots of patterns on them and bright colours. Oh, he quickly decided that he would get into the closet. So he tried to open the biggest closet, but it wouldn't open. When he opened the middle-sized closet, oh no, it was full. He couldn't squeeze his body in there. There was too many head wraps and hats and sandals and slippers and dresses and gowns and leggings and tunics. Oh dear, just then, as he looked over on the other side of the room, he saw a tiny little cupboard and he decided that he's going to go in that one, even though it said, keep out. Well, when he opened it up, he found the most amazing different things in the cupboard. He found Kenty cloth. He found a drum. He found a little wooden boat that he could sail by the beach. Things that he thought were just really cool. And he forgot to hide and started playing with them. Well, the noise downstairs was actually the family coming back who were moving in. And they had more stuff. When they had started to move in, they started have, they were going to have something to eat, but it was too hot for them, so they'd gone out to go and get a few more bits. They came back, and they were hungry, so they went straight into the kitchen after putting their boxes down. Oh, <gasps> Daddy knew straight away, someone's been dipping their fingers in my foo-foo. Mummy -foo. looked, and she said, somebody's been in my foo-foo too. And then the little boy, who was called Kuo, Kuo said, oh, someone's been dipping their fingers in my food and they've eaten it all up. They heard a noise. As they were going to where the noise was, they walked through the front room. <gasps> Uh-oh, somebody's been sitting on our seats, said Daddy and Mummy. Oh, said Kuo, somebody's been on my seat and has broken it all up. stairs. Oh my gosh, what could he do? He looked at the window. He could hop out, run home and nobody would know. <sighs> he thought about it. Just then the door opened and in came the family. <gasps> and they saw Goldilocks in the Kenty cloth. <gasps> they didn't know who he was. And Kofi didn't know who they were. <gasps> Just then, there was a knock at the door. <gasps> and everybody stopped still, went back downstairs, and there they saw at the front door, Kofi's family. Kofi's family said, is Kofi here? A boy with lots and lots of blonde hair. And the family said, yes, there is a little boy in here. Is that his name? He certainly does look like a Goldilocks with that lovely blonde hair. Kofi's mummy said, has he not been very good? They saw what he had done. Made them very sad. Mummy walked over to Kofi and she said, what are you going to do about this then, Kofi? Kofi said, I'll never do it again. I'll never go into somebody's house again. I'll never eat somebody else's food without asking them. I'll never go sit on people's chairs without being asked to sit down. And I certainly won't go through people's cupboards without being told I can. I'm so sorry, said Kofi. Well, the family whose house he'd gone into were really lovely and they accepted his apology and they said, 
He could come round. He would come round again as long as he looked after everything. And in fact, Kofi and the little boy became friends. <laughs> That's very similar to this story, isn't it? It's a version of it, like that one. Now again, Mrs Lee will keep those in her office and you can have a look at them. All right. Mrs Lee has talked lots and lots. My throat's getting a little bit sore now. And my dog, I don't know if you can hear him, is whining. I think he wants to go home now. So I'm going to finish off with a school prayer. Help me to do the things I should to be to others kind and good in all my work and all my play to grow more loving every day. Amen. Hope to see you very soon. Hope you have a lovely festive week and I hope you enjoy the pantomime as much as I think I'm going to. Bye.